Hi there, my name is Gordon Farragher. This recording aims to take you through the VAT implications of the capital goods scheme. Just a quick word of warning before we kick in. This will need some knowledge of VAT already, in particular partial exemption and some of the basic principles of VAT on land and buildings. So I have done separate recordings covering both of those. So if you haven't looked at them, might be a good idea to stop this one, have a look at the partial exemption and the basic land and buildings first, and then come back to this one after. As ever, this is not designed to be a comprehensive review of the topic. This is just to give people an overview understanding of what's going on. So, who does the capital goods scheme apply to? Well, VAT registered traders, when they buy land and buildings costing more than a quarter of a million pounds, or when they spend more than a quarter of a million on land and buildings they've already got. Uh, it does also apply to computers, hardware, ships and the other things mentioned there costing more than £50,000. That tends to be less of an issue. Normally in practice and in, in exams when you see capital goods scheme it's going to be land and buildings. Now to start with it's easiest to understand the capital goods scheme in the context of a partially exempt supplier. Although as I'll come back to, it does apply to fully exempt, the fully taxable suppliers as well. But think partially exempt to start with. If you are a partially exempt supplier and you buy a building to use in your trade, then you're initially going to recover VAT based on the proportion of your turnover or the proportion of the use of the building that is used for taxable purposes. And that money will be recovered as soon as you buy the building. The thing is, a building lasts for quite a long time and your taxable usage may change over time. So what the capital goods scheme does is it says for land and buildings, you've got to keep tabs on your usage of the building for the next 10 years. And if your relative taxable usage changes, then you make a retrospective either VAT recovery or VAT repayment to reflect the change in the usage of the building over the capital goods scheme life. And as I say, for premises, that's 10 years. For the other stuff, it's five years. Now, easiest to see by doing a little example. So we have a VAT registered trader here who is buying a very attractive um, commercial building, new, as you can see, uh, for £1 million. Now, because it's a new commercial building and they're buying a freehold, uh, that will be a standard rated supply to them. So <clears throat> they will actually pay £1.2 million. Now, um, I'm going to tell you that, that this business that's buying the building is a partially exempt supplier. Seven floors of the building are going to be used for their taxable supplies three floors are going to be used for their exempt supplies. So that means in the period in which they buy the building, they will recover 70% of the import that they suffer. That is £140,000. And that is immediately VAT recovered. Now, what we've now got to do is just keep an eye on our usage of the building for the next 10 years. As long as they keep using it, seven floors taxable, three floors exempt, then we're fine, that there's no adjustment needed. But in our example here, after a couple of years, we get to the start of year three, and they now change it a little bit. It now moves to six floors used for taxable supplies, four floors for exempt. And that continues throughout year three and potentially subsequent years. So when we get to the end of year three, we're gonna to have to do a capital goods scheme adjustment for that year and you do the adjustment for each year in isolation. So for year three the way you, you work out the adjustment you say the initial VAT recovery we, we actually recovered 140,000 in full notionally spread that over the 10-year capital goods scheme life and that equates to 14,000 pounds per annum. You now ask, if the new usage had applied when we bought the building, 
what would the VAT recovery have been? Well, it would have been 60% of 200k, which is 120. Notionally spread that over the 10-year capital goods scheme life. And the capital goods scheme adjustment regarding year three is the difference between those two numbers, the 14 and the 12, i.e. you have to, the business have to give back £2,000 of VAT. So they're basically giving back 2,000 of the 140 they recovered when they bought the building. And if they carry on for, well, up to year 10, if they carry on using this building, six floors taxable, four floors exempt, for each of the next six years, they will have to give back another £2,000 of that initial input VAT. Once you get beyond 10 years, well, you're clean. That's the end of the capital goods scheme period. So that's the annual adjustment under the capital goods scheme. But there's one last complication to watch out for. And it's what happens when you sell the building if you sell it within the capital goods scheme life. So what I'm now going to say is we get to the end of year seven and we sell the building for 1.8 million. Now, we've got to think, what type of supply is that? Well, it's the sale of an old commercial building, because it's more than three years old. Therefore, ordinarily, that will be an exempt supply. However, because it's a supply of a commercial building, if we want, we cannot tax the sale. And it's going to make quite a difference, as you will see in a minute. If we don't opt to tax the sale... There will be a capital goods scheme adjustment on sale because basically the last three years, years 8, 9 and 10, are viewed as zero taxable usage. With zero taxable usage, the initial VAT recovery would have been zero. That's zero per annum. Compare that with the 14,000 per annum, which we initially recovered on. And you've got an adjustment for each of those last three years of 14,000. So the business will actually have to pay 52,000 back to HMRC, which isn't pleasant. So what they can do is they can opt to tax the sale. So now rather than selling it for 1.8 million, no VAT, they'll sell it for 1.8 million plus 360,000 of output VAT. Now, you do have to think about the buyer. Is this going to be an issue for the buyer? If the buyer is a fully taxable supplier, they probably won't care because they can recover that anyway. But if the buyer is an exempt supplier, well, this, this will be an issue because the building's just got £360,000 dearer. But the advantage for the seller is you now get an adjustment on sale, which is a VAT recovery. Because those last three years of the capital goods scheme life are deemed to be 100% taxable use. With 100% taxable use, you would initially have recovered 200,000, which equates to 20,000 per annum, spreading it over the 10-year VAT life. Compare with the 14,000 we initially recovered at, and you've got an additional £6,000 of VAT to recover for each of those last three years. So that is an £18,000 recovery compared to a £52,000 payment. So the seller, if they can agree it with the buyer, will be very keen to opt to tax the sale. Also, as a final point on this, bear in mind that this isn't just relevant to partially exempt suppliers. It's also relevant to fully taxable suppliers who would have recovered all of the VAT when they bought the building... If they sell it within the capital goods scheme life and they don't opt to tax the sale, again, they could be hit with this capital goods scheme adjustment on sale and it could be a very expensive mistake.